Hi there everybody, my name is Kendall and I am Replay for Kids Social Media Coordinator and Equipment Manager. Today I will be showing you how to adapt yet another toy and this one is quite fun. It's this big guy, yes, um, and he's actually very simple compared to his size. Uh, people might be a little bit intimidated, very, I, I can, and I can understand truly, um, but it's very, pretty, pretty easy process. Um, he is activated normally through this switch on the side and there you go You see everything he's got going on there We were just putting a single wire and jack out of him so that any child can use this toy First things first as for the tools we're using today Not too many actually and they can all be found in your volunteer at home toolkit That being said if you do not have volunteer at home toolkit on you currently These are all tools that are very easy to find at your local hardware store or online This is nothing special that we've outsourced specifically for our use uh, most of these tools you probably already have in your home. On top of that, replayforkids.org is a great place to answer any extra questions you might have as the tools we use or the toys we adapt. This toy and many others are in our detailed instructions database, as well as the contents of our volunteer kit. And if you have any other questions beyond that, the information to contact us. If you would like to help us adapt towards you have questions about what our organization does, please contact us. We'd love to hear from you. On to the tools themselves. We don't actually need to use that many. Um, I think people see a a big toy like this and get immediately intimidated thinking, oh, you know, there, this is going to be so involved. This is a whole process. Uh, most toys and this one included, not really. Um, we just need the tools to open it and solder on the inside. The short list we got, you're going to want a screw plate. Uh, there are a lot of screws. That is really the only thing that there is a lot of on this toy is there's about 10 to 15 screws on the bottom that you need to unscrew. So you do not want to lose any of those using one of these is Pretty much a necessity unless you're really good at keeping them on the table. The screws you will be um, dealing with today are Phillips. So uh, this is a larger Phillips. It is the blue or flame handle one. If you are using the volunteer toolkit, if you are not, it's just it's just a wider Phillips head. It's it's fairly large. Um, it's a standard size. If you have too small a screwdriver, it you might strip the screws. But even then, it's not really uh, not really a worry. So just make sure you have a, la a larger width. Phillips head. As per usual, we will be using a soldering iron on this toy today. Please see our video on how to solder if you have not previously, and even if you have, just please make sure to follow all the proper safety uh, protocols that would go with using one of these. I make it sound very complex. It's really not. Please do not touch near this. It is hot enough to melt tin. That is the compound that is in the solder uh, that connects wires and everything. It, it is very hot. It's pretty much hot glue for metal. Um, so same, same rules apply as a hot glue gun. Do not touch anywhere near where the melting is happening. That is, that is not a good idea. Um, so yeah, if, if you haven't, if you haven't already, please, please, please watch our video. And of course with the soldering iron, you will want a soldering iron stand to keep it off the table and a damp sponge to wipe off any unnecessary solder that's melted onto the soldering iron. And solder, might want that too. Um, Definitely, definitely need this for the process. We're using both pairs of wire strippers that are in the volunteer toolkit today. Uh, for those who are not using the volunteer toolkit, one is 10 to 22 gauge and the other is 20 to 30 gauge. For those who might be asking the question, why are we using two different pairs? Well, the larger the gauge number, the smaller the actual gauge of the wire. So the pre-cut speaker wire that we specifically use, generally you only need a 16 to 18 gauge wire stripper for, but most of all of the internal toy wires, when we're dealing with anything that's plush, this toy, um, any of our, our bubble machines, stuff like that, they tend to use thinner wires. So you're gonna be using the, the 24 to 26 gauge more often. Of course, as we're talking about it, you'll want your pre-cut speaker wire. We tend to like it a little bit longer in the volunteer toolkit, it'll be pre-cut for you. So if it's not quite as long, that's okay. Nothing, not a big deal. But if you're cutting it yourself, um, we do like it on the, uh, the whale to be about 2.5 to three feet long, just because he is larger. Um, so in comparison, the wire should be a little bit longer because it's got more, you know, more space in the toy, stuff like that. And of course the jack that will be going on the end of your wire. More detailed instructions on how our jacks work will be in this video as well as soon on our YouTube channel. So keep an eye out for that. As always, we do recommend using a helping hand. This is just the one we make in house, but they are able to be found online just a little bit harder. 
The helping hand is as advertised. It helps you hold any extra wires that you might have trouble keeping together while you're soldering. A pair of diagonal cutters, just a tiny bit smaller and will help you get into the tight space the jack has. Always good to use them if you have a pair around. And last but not least, uh, you have your choice of a hot glue gun or electrical tape. Today, I will be using electrical tape just because it keeps my space a little bit cleaner, but in all honesty, it's not that much cleaner than hot glue and either is a fine alternative for the other. That is all we need. So without further ado, let's just get right into it. First things first, you wanna make sure you have a nice clean space to be working with. Um, it's a very, very large toy, as you can see, and I'm gonna try my best to get as many good angles as I can of it as possible, but some of that is gonna be very difficult. So you'll have to work with me on that. And the first step is going to be taking our screw plate and our screwdriver, and there are 15 screws on the bottom of him to detach the top of him from the base. Like I said, I'm not gonna be perfect in frame for this, but I'm gonna take all of these out real quick and I'll, uh, I'll speed up and we'll get to the next step. We have all of our screws taken out of the toy. Next step is to gently, as gently as possible, I should say, might be a little bit on there. Just, you can push up on the seam there, all around, and our guy is gonna start to come apart. Little button, we're just gonna set that same place in our screw plate. Because this was harder to get in frame as I was doing it, I'm taking some photos and adding some VO over top. The whale has a single latched wire that you need to disconnect in the center when you take the top off to fully disconnect it. All you need to do is pull the bottom from the top. Do not worry about the top half of the whale once you are done. There is nothing to adapt with that that will simply just sit off to the side until you put the toy back together. Now that our wire is in place, all we need to do is chop it right about here. We're gonna split the wires and then we're gonna insert our own speaker wires. You take our wire strippers, we're gonna cut them right at the base of it, right there. So now, all connectors off right there. And we're gonna strip them about a quarter inch. This is where our yellow wires come in, our yellow wire strippers come in. And if you've never used wire strippers before, all you need to do is clamp right about where you want to strip the wire. So something like this, as you can see, and then just pull straight out. And that came out really easily. Maybe a little bit extra too, which is nice. Just do that one more time. Make sure my other wire's out of the way. And yet again, you're just making sure it's straight clamped in there and you pull all righty so as we get super close in on the wires here you can see that these are actually all a bunch of small wires and what we want to do is we want to twist them together this is what they should look like when you twist them together and now that i'm out further with um the wires i'm going to show you all i'm doing see they're, they're very thin um, so it's hard to see from this angle here all i'm doing is that you're just twisting these to make sure they are all together, like so. And once you're done with that, uh, you are ready to take your pre-cut speaker wire, and what you're gonna do is you're gonna split it straight down the center. So it's actually two wires, as is. So you can just take a fingernail right in there and just split it apart like so. And you'll really only need to strip the same amount. Um, right here we got our red wire strippers, same exact process. 
just clamp. If it wants to let me. <laughs> just clamp right there. And pull straight out. Try that one more time. Clamp like so. Pull. Alrighty. And on the other side, clamp like so. And pull. Oh, resistance. There we go. And you'll do the exact same thing we just did with those other wires. You'll take that and you'll just twist them to make them all one singular wire. All right, and now we are going to connect them. So we're gonna take one side to each and twist them together. It doesn't look great from this angle, but I will clip them into our uh, good old trusty helping hand here uh, that we're using and show you a clearer shot. Now that I've set it up for the soldering process, it's very easy to show you how these are wrapped around each other. They don't have to be this pretty, but it'll make your process slightly easier. Now on to actually soldering. Again, please do follow the proper procedures when you are soldering. Um, but a quick tutorial, you're always going to want to hold your soldering iron in your dominant hand like a pen, and your actual solder is going to be in your other hand ready to apply. And all you need to do is just put this soldering iron up against where you're working and apply. And we're just gonna make sure the entire area gets covered in solder. Even let it glob up a little bit. Generally, you know you're done once it's got a rusted or fully silver look to it. Added a little bit much there, so let me just wipe that off very gently on my sponge off screen and then one more do you remember that it might take a try or two just take it slowly and you'll be fine and from here all we need to do is just once it's cooled which it will cool pretty much instantly, take a little bit of electrical tape and cover up the entire node we got here. Um, the insulation might not cool immediately, be careful about that, but we just need to cover that up so that if the wires were ever to move around a little bit in the toy, they would never contact each other. And activate on accident. Alrighty, there, and it doesn't need to be super pretty. It just needs to be like that. You can split your other wire, the other end of your wire, and strip it just like you did the other one, real quick. And once you touch both of these ends together, your toy should activate if the batteries are in. Once these both touch together and it activates, then you're ready to move on to your next step. Now, all we need to do from here, actually, is I'm gonna chop off this end now that we know the toy works. All right, and we just need to tie a knot in it and have the wire itself exit the toy. Um, the knot is what we call strain relief, and what that allows us to have is if a child were to, say, pull on this wire, it would not mess up any of the work we did uh, soldering those wires together. So... Our natural exit is gonna be where I'm pointing this wire, right here. Uh, these are actually, um, I believe, studs for the packaging, and you can just insert your wire right there, but first we gotta tie the knot. And it's just a quick 
quick overhand knot somewhere like right here. Make sure it has a little bit of slack. You just take the wire and have it exit right, right here. Uh, it's kind of hard to see amongst the wires. Right there. And take this. Make sure it's not wrapped around itself in any way, which mine is. Uh, so. Like that. And just pull straight through. To make sure that uh, your uh, your wires are out of the way, aren't touching any of the motors here that we got on the sides. They don't want them to get in the way and make noise or anything like that. And there you have it. Our wire's out. It's exiting, exiting our toy right there. And that's all you need. That's 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 all you need. Um, now we can go ahead and put the toy back together and start on the jack which is the last step incidentally so like i said we're putting them back together um two things to note one you want to make sure this is this base of the slide here right here is pushed down as much as possible sometimes it lifts up a little bit you want to make sure it's pushed down as far as possible and do not forget the button that fell out yeah so it has a designated spot it sits on in the uh inside there right there the toy has specific guides and everything it should pretty much fall into place without much force but you might need to shimmy it over a little bit here and there just to make sure it gets in so we're in there coming together there there we go all right yep and there's a little snap some of the parts might snap together that's completely normal as well um, and once you screw it in everything will also be fine and dandy this likes to come out as well Just gotta, gotta shimmy it a little bit sometimes there we go all right so now is just the long and fun process yet again of screwing everything back into place. So we will start and I am going to yet again fast forward and do this a little bit off frame because it is going to take quite a while. So the jack is probably the hardest thing and the one thing that most volunteers get caught up on their first time adapting a toy. And that is why we now go through it very thoroughly to make sure there is no confusion on your end as to how we like the jack to be done and all the specifications. Trust me, it is actually very easy and I will try to again go through as thoroughly as possible as to make sure there is no confusion. There are three types of jacks that you're going to come across when you adapt toys with us. Number one is going to have two silver circular hoops at the top. Number two is going to have a silver circular loop and a copper square loop at the top. And number three is going to have two copper square loops at the top. Everything about these jacks function pretty much the same, but there is a very clear caveat when dealing with all three of these. If both of your loops match, so specifically the two silver loop and the two copper square loop, if both of those match, it does not matter what side you connect your wire to. But in the event that you have one and one, aka jack number two we showed, that is where you always want to connect to the circular silver loop. The copper is not the correct connection point on that jack, the circle silver loop is. Every single time you adapt a jack as well, the second wire is going to go through the back post. Now, before you do anything like stripping your wires or connecting them to the jack, the first thing that you must do is separate the jack into its two parts. You'll have the jack piece and the sleeve. And you 
always want to remember to make sure that you thread the sleeve through your wire before you do anything. Because if you forget to thread the sleeve through, you will not be able to put it back on once the jack is attached. Uh, and you will have to restart the entire process over again. So please remember to thread that sleeve through uh, and make sure that that is on there for when you are done. Next, what you wanna do is take your fingernail and split your wires the same way we did when we attached them to your toy. This time though, to line up the wires easier with the jack, what we like to do is clamp the first, maybe eighth of an inch of the wire. It's always the end of the clamp here on the wire strippers. You're going to bend one side of the wire like this and just chop that little extra bit off. Now one of your wires is going to be just slightly shorter than the other, and that way it's gonna line up with these loops better on the jack. So, strip your wire the exact same way we would normally. Just clamp and pull, and same process you did with your toy, just take the wire and twist it so it's uniform just like that now they should look braided as they did previously um, so it's a single connection now all you need to do is going in through the center loop your wires into the correct loops on your jack so for for example i have a jack with two copper loops at the top right here i'm going to loop the wire in one wire in one side at the top and the other shorter wire through the back like that and now i can just bend the wires out of the way and we are ready to solder and chop those short and that is all you need to do take this slow be careful if you are having trouble seating them that's no problem you can start over as many times as you need to just follow the instructions as best you can. Alrighty, now final final step right here. So do the exact same thing you did and all we're attempting to do is just completely cover where you put the wire through. So this entire little loop here we're just filling in with solder. Same process, slightly more intricate. Make sure your insulation isn't in the way and the insulation on the end of the jack doesn't get too burnt. That's covered. And then I'll flip this so we have a little bit of a better view of the back. Right there. And all you need to do is the exact same thing. Smoking's normal, it'll do that. Just make sure you cover the entire area and it's not going anywhere. Alrighty, and there you have it. And once that cools, you can take the end of your wire strippers here, um, or can, you can get a pair of diagonal cutters Ooh, very hot. Uh, be careful. You just snip the extras off. Like that. And you slide, slide your, your, your sleeve up and twist clockwise. And there you have it. So, as long as you uh, did your jack correctly, you can plug in a test switch like so, right here, and you have a little plunger there. If the batteries are in the toy and the toy is on, once you press the plunger, the toy activates just like that. Super easy, super simple, um, and super fun. And just like that, you have officially adapted your toy. Congratulations. Hope everything went well for you. I hope 
there weren't many hiccups and I hope the video was as instructive as possible. Instructive, is that a word? I think it is. Okay. <laughs> hey Siri, is instructive a word? Instructive means useful and informative. Instructive is a word. There we go. A few things before we go. First off, I'd like to thank you so much for watching this video today. If you had fun adapting with me or adapting yourself, any questions you have about the toy we adapted today are going to be hopefully answered in the description. That is where I've put the instructions to the specific toy we adapted, as well as where to find this toy if you're looking to get one and adapt it yourself. Also, we have social medias that are going to be linked down there. Uh, it's our Facebook, Replay for Kids, and Twitter, at Replay for Kids. Pretty straightforward. That's where you can find more information about us as well as what we're doing day to day and workshops we're holding here personally in Solon. I'd always like to point out there is a subscribe button. It's great if you follow the channel and watch us adapt more toys and learn something yourself. Uh, there's a like button if you like the video and if you comment below, we try our best to answer any questions you have uh, as well as we'd love to see feedback on these videos. Anything constructive is always great. We want to make our content as good as possible. So on that note, once again, thank you for watching and I hope you have a wonderful day.